Pass me to give you an introduction to one of my initiatives, uh, Great Forest. Um, Great Forest works mostly in commercial real estate on recycling issues. Um, and our purpose in life is to manage waste sustainably. Um, I started the organization back in 1989. And I see you've got Tony Schifano, who's kind of the guy who does the same thing for hospitals later on. Tony's a great guy. So we're the commercial office. He's the He's the guy who started it in hospitals, but way back in when recycling was just a little thought and a few people's ideas, uh, I started this organization trying to work out how to bring recycling in, especially to New York City, because you look at those huge towering buildings and they're just filled with, with waste. And at the time they were filled with waste that was being picked up by the mob. And I was a bit stupid to think that I could actually uh, get involved there, but it turned out pretty well. We ended up uh, being able to really set up um, and design recycling processes and have continued from there on um, to work, you know, around the U.S. and sometimes around the world on recycling systems and develop all kinds of different um, new initiatives. Uh, you know, we helped lead, develop their, their audit processes. Um, we helped uh, many different uh, uh, municipalities, including New York City, develop their recycling regulations. We've been kind of deep in the middle of of that side of the of this particular sustainability challenge for an awful long time um so you know this is kind of the who's who of real estate that we work with and have done so for for a long time um ar across the us so um what i wanted to focus on now was um kind of the the direction that recycling is going and the focus now on circular economy which translates to uh, the zero waste initiative um, in, in this particular piece of, of the equation. And there's value to do this. The, 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 one of the things that we forget about is how much the waste equation is a part of carbon. And uh, this, is a, this particular analysis, I think, brings it home very clearly that um, this is greenhouse gas emissions from, from commercial entities, which includes you know, commercial office buildings. And uh, emissions from landfills are an enormous part of this particular issue. So when you're worried about GHG emissions from um, your office facilities, yes, the largest part of it is from electricity and gas and, and the rest of it. And, uh, but there is a huge piece of this that comes from, from, from waste. And so we, we ought to be focusing on this um, with that particular in mind. And as well as that, we need to also acknowledge that over the last decade or so, there's been an enormous amount of regulatory shift that's going on. So there's a, you all probably know about the um, proposed Plastic Pollution Act that's, that's proposed in nationwide, but it's one of several things that are, that are under consideration. Meanwhile, California has, you know, taken the lead in so many different things, not just in plastics, but in other sorts of diversion issues as well. So tracking these and knowing where, where and what needs to happen is, is kind of critical as well um, for someone who's concerned about these issues. So what we do is we go into a facility, a corporation with multiple locations, sometimes more than 100, sometimes a thousand. And we look at a process of being able to reduce the amount of waste that goes to landfill or that goes to um, incineration. And it starts with evaluation, where we'll go in and we'll do waste audits um, with the guys who've really developed the waste audit protocols over the last uh, decade or so. Um, we'll also go in and review how well recycling systems are functioning with a scorecard process. And then we're assisting the facility to set up the right kind of methods to be able to divert waste into the right uh, different places. And that involves a lot of um, education and, and, and layout of systems and the rest of it. And for clients that go the further step, it also involves looking at um, the different products that are coming into their facilities that end up in the waste stream and trying to minimize those as well. All of that needs a great deal of tracking. And I'll show you some of the tracking processes. And these things then go into adjusting programs um, as, as go on. And then you end up with this circularity uh, to try and, and bring, bring the processes to, uh, to, better, to a better end. So when you think about um, a, a waste stream for a typical commercial facility, 
And you start with the simple things. Let's recycle our cardboard. Let's get our uh, paper separate from the rest of the material. Perhaps it's uh, office paper. Um, that will get you pretty simply to about a 50% diversion ratio. Um, going a little further and looking at commingled glass metal plastic, which is, you know, again, the sort of material that will end up in, um, in the waste streams that we heard about a little bit earlier. Um, and then also adding composting in. This takes a lot more time. It's more complex. There's a lot more vendors you have to bring in play. There's separation systems in education. But within 12 months, you can get a typical commercial facility to about 80% um, of diversion with quite a lot of attention and energy. And you need a buy-in from all of the different players, the janitorial and staff and, and vendors and all the rest of it to get to that kind of level. Now, if you want to get to 90%, and the reason that 90% is such a, an important um, metric is that there is a delightful certification system called the True, true Certification System. It's put, put out by USGBC, and it um, is for companies that can show that they're at that level of diversion. Um, and like LEED, it gives you a very you know, high profile, um, valuable certification. And to do that, it you need to do even more than that. You really need to look either at manufacturing processes if you have them associated, or you need to look at being able to go back into supply of materials coming in and look at source reduction. So that means looking at re you know, taking plastics out and going to reusable materials and cafeterias and the sort and doing all those sort of things. It means involved looking upstream is the way that we talk about it. But this process overall, um, is uh, a path that can can bear fruit not only in terms of reputation but also in terms of cost because most of these steps reduce costs for disposal now there's another way that we're tracking this not just in terms of diversion ratio but there's also a process that we have called the missed opportunity metric and when you're diverting materials into different waste streams you'll often put recyclables in with the garbage or you'll end up with the garbage having um, uh, the, the recyclables, having materials in it that are contaminated that can't be recycled. And you've lost some opportunity for doing that. So um, in our data processes here, we like to track all of the different aspects from diversion to separation to greenhouse gas and all the rest of it. But this, this, this missed opportunity metric is a way where you can really target specifically what part of the systems that are happening within the facility are not working. So I think we'll see more of this as time goes on. So I know I'm running a little, little behind time here, Scott, but there is a lot of different ways to be able to track these. And there's a lot of systems that we have in place that we bring to bear as, as uh, buildings go through this process. Yeah, take your time. We're okay. We have a couple of questions too, and we'll get about another five to seven minutes. So thank you. Okay, good, because I'm almost at the end. All right. So um, zero waste is a tough metric to get to. Um, it's mostly been something that manufacturers have focused on because when you're manufacturing, you can really manage that, that product and use product to, to be a minimum. It's also mostly focused uh, on the West Coast for now. But I think uh, this certification process is going to come further and further into our thinking as time goes on, because it does make sense and it does work for companies who are doing it. So this is for us the long term strategy where we think things will go in terms of waste management within within commercial properties. Um, it is uh, the, the largest uh, area of, pr of production of waste um, is in office buildings outside of uh, uh, outside of um, uh, residential use. So there's an there's a there's an opportunity here to be able to really improve performance and and do so in a way that's certified and tracked and and coordinated and fits in with all the SDG goals and the CDC reporting and all the rest of it. So I will stop there and happily turn over to to questions. Yeah, thank you, Richard. We had a question from uh, Nick Nick Doyle. So let me just. Exit the full screen here, one sec, sorry. Nick, are you on there? Yes, sir. Yeah, so Nick, why don't you introduce yourself and he had a quick question for you, thank you. 
Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me here. Uh, my name is Nick Doyle, and I work for a company called Tomer Sorting Solutions. Uh, we specialize in advancing the circular economy through the recovery of different materials at the MRF level, as well as refining them at the uh, plastics or a PRC, we're called plastic recycling, or paper mill or glass plant level as well. The question I had, Rich, was how do you hold, I mean, how you kind of covered it in the used to score the different recycling facilities that your customers are sending their materials to, but how do you hold those MRFs accountable for that? Because once they send the material there, you know, it, and the material will be, could be recovered, but at the same time, it's very hard to measure, okay, these tons coming from this specific, MRF, this specific building are then being blended into the tons at this MRF. How do you hold that MRF accountable for, to continue to develop that material? Yeah, Nick, this is really an important question because it's very difficult to do so unless you've arranged for a particular MRF and paid them to shut their facilities and go through and do a sort and then end up with the results. And we've done that for very large clients, you know, government level agencies who needed that sort of data. Um, but um, to do that for a typical, um, you know, set of office buildings in Manhattan is, is really difficult. What, what we rely on then are kind of generic results from the MRF, um, saying what kind of levels of outthrows they have for different kinds of products. And occasionally we'll go in and do spot checks on those, but it's that piece is one of the big issues. And what we see is that some facilities are much better at being able to pick and sort than others. Mm. So I'm looking forward to your presentation and because I think it's critical for their profitability too to be able to do this at a better level. I think there's so many opportunities in, in MRF design that, uh, that, that will benefit all the way back up, up the supply chain. Mm. 